trauma, as I mentioned, comes to everyone because of all of our experiences that we may have. It comes at different times. It could come at different times, but because of our specific history of conflict, of displacement, of famine, disease, all of these really make trauma very, very close to many people. Something that we're experiencing, whether it's historical, current, and constantly coming, and also perceived. You know, trauma is something that people are always expecting to come. And talk to me about your efforts, you know, in South Sudan. It's my understanding that you are also heavily involved in doing, you know, training people who will be going out there to heal others. So I was trained by the Center for Mind-Body Medicine from 2016. And I'm coming actually from a, from a human rights background. That's, 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 I'm a human rights lawyer. So I came to South Sudan really seeing a lot of the things that people are experiencing due to conflict, due, due, due to uh, displacement, due to community violence. And it became very, very important for me to deal with my own trauma. And it became also important for me to be able to help the people that I'm trying to talk to. So I'm working with <clears throat> many different people from different communities, you know, whether it's a military hospital, Juba teaching hospital, <clears throat> working with civil society, trying to target um, people working with women, survivor groups, um, youth groups, basically trying to get them to be trained as I was trained so that they can reach their community and use this model. And this model is very simple. You were raising a, an important point that trauma should not be taken negatively. But, you know, it's my experience is trauma is an embedded memory of something that has happened to you in life, which keeps coming. When you don't deal with trauma, uh, what happens is you see things through a certain lens, you know, so if you've experienced trauma and triggers take you to that traumatic place, you know, in your memory, you know, some people tend to be, for example, maybe very sad and depressive. Other people may get withdrawn. Other people may get aggressive and angry. So this is where we're seeing people responding immediately after they hear something. Um, it's not to say that you know, trauma is negative, it's, it really is an invitation for people to explore why, you know, something is triggering. South Sudan has immense needs for healing, for identifying trauma, and for tackling the issue. How are you handling that situation? What we're doing with the center is trying, so I was in Juba in July and August, and really what I was doing was working with the people that have been training online. So there are about, in total, maybe 20, 22 people from South Sudan. But I worked with about 10 people um, throughout the one month that I was there. And we did trainings with different communities. So they were able to, you know, invite people from their, you know, people that they serve, whether it's people dealing with alcoholism, people dealing with health challenges, um, activists, journalists, um, civil society, military. We were able to come together and, um, and, and do these training. And basically, what I noticed is that, you know, South Sudanese have lost a lot of hope. There's a lot of hopelessness there. That's why we see an increase in suicides and... Um, as well as substance abuses, you know. So doing this work really helps people to reconnect with their own ability to heal. We are working to, you know, talk with donors, talk with um, different organizations about bringing this model from the Center for Mind-Body Medicine to South Sudan. So we're thinking of a, of a nationwide program where we train first responders, the people who are closest to the community, you know, hospitals, church, police, military, uh, civil society, different community groups, different specific ministry groups, 
uh, <clears throat> you know, um, teachers and giving them the tools that I have, you know, these very same tools that anyone can learn, actually. Very, very simple, but very, very powerful. Yeah. You were saying that you were talking to activists, donors, and a lot of groups to see that if you can roll out a nationwide program targeting people across the country. How are you moving with that? How far have you gone with that? We are in the process of writing um, proposals and, um, you know, with, with, with some organizations working with um, the Office of the Vice President, um, Rebecca Nyanding, and working with other, other donors as well, basically trying to, to bring mind-body medicine to South Sudanese. You know, so this is something that is accessible. You know, the science is very interesting and very simple. From my experience working with women, you know, who've never been to school, to people, you know, people in healthcare, we work to meet each other on a human level.